to know. Lock picking pool. And this is a Cryptex made famous by the movie uh, The Da Vinci Code. In the movie, there was some vinegar or acid or something. And if they forced the lock open, that would break and destroy the secret message. So this is a replica. Uh, I think it was bought on Amazon. A present someone got me, which is really nice of them, actually. Um, it's another uh, picking buddy. And this is a birthday present, of which he stuck a lottery ticket inside, which sadly didn't win anything. But still, I did get it open. Um, it's got a really satisfying movement. These wheels spin beautifully. And it's basically a really fancy combination lock. Six wheels rather than the usual four. And 26 letters on each wheel, which gives it makes it what's that 26 to the power of six, which is a little under 309 million combinations. Thankfully, it's not gonna take us that long to open it. Um, it's die cast with machine bar brass wheels on top. And the weakness in this lock is with the die cast mechanism, simply because it's not that precise. And so therefore there's a reasonable amount of giving this. And like all locks, if you can tension the mechanism, then you can find the binding wheel and you can open it. In this particular case, it's both by touch and visual. There's a, you'll see when I show you, when I, when I pick it, it um, has a little gaps between the discs as the mechanism is under tension. And you can use that to spot when a, when a disc is set or not. Um, so we'll use a weight of a lock against it. So if I suspend it just by the cap here, that's going to tension the entire mechanism. Now, normally you would line everything up with these two arrows here, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it from the other side. Uh, and I actually can't remember the code. I, I did this, uh, sort of my eyes shut, reset it, and I don't know what the code is. So I'm going to have to pick it open, otherwise I'm not going to be able to get it open. So let's go up, have a look around, see where the gaps are. And I'm looking at the gaps at the bottom of the wheel, not the top of the wheel. And I think the best gap might be the bottom wheel. So I'm going to start there. Yeah, it's quite stiff. And what I'm expecting it to do is for the wheel to drop and then bind as it drops into a gate. Oh, I might do it with my other hand, that way I'm not obscuring the camera. Ah, see that? It just dropped and the gap has appeared on the wheel above. So I'm just going to turn that. There it goes. See that drop down? No gap on the second, on the third wheel. Might be a gap on the fourth. No, oh, a very clear gap at the top. So I'm going to try that one next. Yeah, that is stiff, it's binding. Bingo. Right, so there's a nice gap there now on three. Ah, I dropped. Again, a really pronounced gap on for wheel four. I dropped. That only leaves five, so this will open. Ah, <laughs> I was right on it. Right, so now, it's, you've got to be quite precise with this. Ah, there you go. Oh. Yeah, could have, could have been a Mars bar in there, I guess. Uh, that's it. Now, what, they, what the lot was binding on are these lugs here. There are gates on the inside of these, down this channel, in the lock here. And the reason it gives itself away is the gaps between the lugs. If you measure those with a micrometer, they wouldn't be precise. They'd be in imprecisions between those distances. And that's what allows us to work out which wheel to pick next. Which is basically the principle of all lock picking. You're, you are 
um, exploiting manufacturing tolerances, which is why some of the better, really well engineered locks are so much harder to pick because there's, there's it, the, ex, the, the tolerances are so much tighter that they're less obvious. But anyway, that's a topic for another day. And if you wanted to pick a combination lock, the principle is largely the same if you can get the mechanism under tension. I hope you enjoyed that. Something a little different.